Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Off the Cuff live stream. So I put the view like this because a few of you wrote me and said that you hated the view on the other side. So I've switched it back to the old view. Trying to get everything hooked up. Things aren't working, of course. But they will be. Hello, Nikki. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You might want to, you can probably look at what you're typing in to make sure you're typing in there. Yeah, I don't know what this is. I was just trying one really quick. Is Mark now? 
Yeah, probably. Is there a way to do it without the computer? Yeah. I mean, if you go, like, when you hit the, uh, the mic, my live? live yeah. You're like right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go live. You can come in and keep it fixing it while I'm doing yeah. the show, okay? I'm going to go live, okay? Okay. Oh, how do you stop this? I, uh, turn keep, off. Just turn it off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can fade it. Well, oh, yeah. okay. I'm ready. Listening to Off the Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to the show, and thank you for tuning in to WLXU 93.9 FM. In addition to listening on the radio, you can check out our Facebook live stream at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks, or you can stream the show live from the station website at radiolex.us. It is May the 16th. 2024. Usually you hear a disclaimer before the show, and we're having a few technical difficulties is why you didn't hear the disclaimer. But eventually, we're going to have people behind me, you'll see on the Facebook live stream, trying to get the computer fixed. But I will just give a little disclaimer of of today's show, not because it's going to be a crazy, crazy show. I don't know, maybe it is. However, uh, the views expressed on this program are solely those of my own and not those of Radio Lex. But folks, it is May the 16th, which means that graduation is in full swing across the board, across uh, most places. Graduation has been happening for middle schools. Graduation has been happening for colleges. Graduation has been happening for high schools. And it will continue to happen all the way up until June. Usually, uh, I, I know that Eastern Kentucky schools back in the day, they used to always go up until June because of the snow. But nowadays with the NTI, who knows of how long they actually last. But because of graduation season still in full swing, that means there's going to be a lot of graduation. There's going to be a lot of graduation uh, speeches. And On the show before, we have talked about some of the best graduation speeches throughout time, and I've went through a plethora of great speeches. However, I love it when... Could you uh, make sure the door closes, too? There's a little racket. Uh, I love it when when speeches go off the rails, kind of like this show today. The show is kind of off the rails, but I love it when graduation speeches, when students are up giving speeches and... (coughs) They go off the rails. Excuse me. I told you, this is a show that really is off the rails today. Okay, so I started going through some of graduation speeches and college speeches of where a student speaker has gotten up and gave a speech. And usually what happens is they end up, instead of praising the school that they went to and praising the teachers and the faculty and the administration... I love it when they get up and they actually bash the school. They actually um, call out the administration or they actually just get on them for things that they've done wrong to them. So I started searching through a bunch of other videos. And this first one that I want to talk about is a valedictorian when she slammed her high school administration. She said everything up to the counselor being drunk all the time. She talked about how her teachers, no thanks to them, contributed to her success. So this particular high school uh, was in Texas, and the valedictorian's name, excuse me while I butcher it, is San Yodoro. And San Yodoro, she gets up and she gives her valedictorian speech, and this is what she says in her speech. Now she starts out praising uh, the teachers that she loves, She does uh, give credit to her friends for helping her with her success, but then things take a turn, and she starts calling out administration. So I want you to take a listen at this speech, and just listen how it starts out.
See, it's very nice, very appropriate for a graduation happening right now. Now she's thanking her friends. Okay, now this is when it goes off the rails. Now, this is a graduation speech that I would want to sit through. And of course, she gets a standing ovation for her speech. So I guess if you want to get the crowd on your side, go away from the original script and just call out the administration and the staff if they deserve it. Now, I have been to several graduations in my life. Because I'm a college professor, I have attended many, many, many. And I have never really heard a valedictorian go off the script and start calling out administration. Now, I, of course, would be on the other end of that um, because I'm the teacher, they're the student. But I always find it very entertaining when they go off the script because valedictorians, they're supposed to turn in their speech before they give it to let the administration approve it. Okay, here is another example of a valedictorian whose graduation speech was cut off. His microphone was cut off because he decides to criticize his school's administration. Take a listen. Throughout my time in the area, I have pursued every leadership opportunity available to me. In addition to being a member of student council since I was a freshman, my classmates have also elected me class president for the past four years, which has been my greatest honor, and I would like to thank you all for that one final time. It really means a lot. However, at our school, the title of class president could more accurately be class party planner, and student council's main obligation is to paint signs every week. Despite some of the outstanding people in our school, the lack of a real student government combined with the authoritative attitude that a few teachers, administrators, and board members have, prevents students from truly developing as leaders. Hopefully, this will change. The mic's gone. They cut it off. And the administration's just trying to rush him off stage. That was valedictorian and class president Peter Batura. And of course, there you go, another standing ovation. Okay, now this next example and the last example that I'm going to let you listen to is not necessarily a speech that's gone wrong. It's not necessarily anything that a student did during a valedictorian speech. This is actually when the college president gets up to speak, and he is the president of South Carolina University. Big university, a well-known university across the land. Well, he gets up and congratulates the class from graduating, not from the University of South Carolina, but the University of California. <laughs> How do you get that wrong? I can understand slip-ups. I can understand mistakes. I can understand saying the wrong name, mispronouncing the wrong name. 
But when you, as the president of the college, call your school something different, it, it's that's that's bad. And that's really almost unforgivable because you're the president of the university. You didn't even make a mistake and call it another university uh, in the same state. You're at the University of South Carolina and you congratulated the class from graduating from the University of California. This is one of my favorite videos. Take a listen. <laughs> he said, excuse me, South Carolina. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, like, okay. <laughs> there was no comment from him for days, but he eventually said he owed the community and the uh, university a ton of push-ups because he felt like that would be a way he could pay back his mistake. Listen, I know I said it's unforgivable, and maybe it is. I don't think the man deserves to be fired and lose his position over that, but he, he does need to be reprimanded, and he deserves all of the hate messages he's been getting, to a point. Not so much to where it's nasty mail, but you do deserve a little bit of hate there. But that, folks, is just some examples of when graduation speeches have gone off the rails. Maybe you've got a graduation coming up very soon that you're going to be attending, and when you do attend that graduation, think maybe hope for a graduation speech that goes off the rails, because that's when it's really interesting. Okay, we have our computer up and working now, so I think it is fine for me to go ahead and take our first break. We have a great show ahead of you today. You are listening to Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. Stick with us. We will be right back. I'm the host of Serious Music, and you're listening to Radio Lex, the voice of the people, to be LXU 93.9 LPFM Lexington. Radio Lex has the support of vinyl sponsor, the JCC Group family of companies. The JCC Group .com. This winter, protect your family, your friends, and yourself by getting flu shots and COVID-19 shots. Visit LFCHD. Oh, Renee, you're so kind. And let's all get vaccinated. You are the best. Hey, Gary, my man. Gary, listen, I haven't forgot about you, brother. Let's go places safe. And I plan on getting you on the show very, very soon. I can't wait to be hypnotized, but I haven't forgot about you. Forgive my... It's not uncommon to encounter farmers on the road. I don't know what you call it. Just forgive me for it. I plan on reaching out to you very, very soon. And don't tell Gabe. The farmer won't be speeding up. Make sure the farmer can see you in rearview mirrors. Loud machinery may prevent hearing your vehicle approach. Use extreme caution when passing. When the farmer veers to the right, it may be to make a left turn, not to let you pass, so watch out. Be patient and slow down. Enjoy the countryside. Together, car and truck drivers and farm equipment operators can make our roads safer for everyone. everybody to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. That is the iconic voice of the iconic rock and roller Ozzy Osbourne. And the voice you're hearing right now that just came in is the iconic voice of pop star Post Malone. This was a rock and roll and pop collab Another example of a great cross-genre collab that a musician has done. On this show for the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of having a reoccurring themed segment where I have talked about some of the best cross-genre collabs of all time. And we've talked about some of the best country cross-genre collabs, some of the best cross-genre uh, rap collabs, 
We've talked about some of the cross-genre pop collabs. And today I would like to talk on the show about the best cross-genre rock collabs of all time. And this will conclude our reoccurring segment on cross-genre collabs. I feel like we've taken every major genre in music and covered it. Now, of course, there's a ton of genres in music if you get down to the nitty-gritty. There's classic, there's gospel, there's uh, folk, there's Spanish music, there's all kinds. But I feel like the mainstream genres, rock, pop, rap, country, we've covered. So, this is the last genre to do. Now, keep in mind that when I talk about these collabs, these are not collabs within the genre. These are cross-genre collabs. That means that the artist from a certain genre has stepped outside of their genre and collabed with another artist from another genre. And I have compiled a list of some of the best rock cross-genre collabs of all time. And we'll start with this song right here. It's called Take What You Want by Ozzy Osbourne and pop star Post Malone. Now, both artists are obviously, they come from very different musical spheres. Heavy metal is more Ozzy Osbourne and Post Malone is more of a pop rapper. So, when you smash these two together, you got a classic hit. So, this song was released in late 2019. And it would come as a shock when Ozzy Osbourne showed up on the collab. I think a lot of people were surprised to just see two people from different worlds, especially Ozzy Osbourne and Post Malone, get together and make a song. But they get, they gave us a great one. Okay, coming up next, folks, on my list is one of the best cross-genre rock collabs of all time. Comes from Anthrax and Public Enemy. This song is Bring the Noise, and it was released in 1991. Now, a lot of these songs that make the list are songs that were just redone and remixed into collabs. So originally, this song, Bring the Noise, was released by Public Enemy in 1987, but Anthrax, the rock group, took this song and remixed it and did a collab. And because of that, the collab is actually better than the original song. Anthrax guitarist... Scott Ian said, I didn't, or this is from Public Enemy's Chuck D. He said, I initially didn't take Anthrax serious when they wanted to take our song and remix it and collab with us. But he said, quote, I soon changed my mind. Because when they got together, I think they realized that, hey, we're both serious about the genres that we're in. Let's get together and make this song even better. And I think they did. Okay, coming up next on my list is one of the best cross-genre rock collabs of all time. Comes from rockers Errol Smith when they teamed with rappers DMC. Run DMC and Errol Smith, Walk This Way, classic 1986 song. Errol Smith were in the doldrums when New York hip-hop Hoppers invited Steven Tyler and Joe Perry to appear on a remake of this song from their 1975 album, Toys in the Attic. Uh, 
Joe Perry revealed, I didn't know Run from DMC till we met them in the studio and cracked a lot of beers. It's just awesome when artists who never thought they'd even get along get together and actually get to know each other and they end up liking each other. I mean, isn't that how it is in life too? We think we're not going to like somebody. But then you meet them and you talk to them and you're like, crap, I really didn't want to like you, but I do. Okay, coming up next on my list as one of the best cross-genre rock collabs of all time comes from Linkin Park when they stepped outside of their rock genre and collabed with Jay-Z on the song Numb. This song won the award for best rap slash song collaboration at the 48th Grammy Awards. So, not only do I think this was a great rock cross-genre collab, but so does the Grammys. Jay-Z and Linkin Park. Some people call Jay-Z the king of rap. I disagree with that, but... Nonetheless, he's still a big star in the genre. Linkin Park, a huge star in the rock genre. It makes sense for two people at the top of their genres to get together and collab. All right, and finally, one more on the list. As one of the best cross-genre rock collabs of all time, is when Lint Biscuit got together with rapper Method Man for this classic song, In Together Now. Fred Durst from Lint Biscuit and Method Man are an unlikely but a very effective duo. The front man for Limp Biscuit was obviously Fred Durst, and he showed that he was capable of trading verses with the big boys when he linked up with rapper Method Man for this 1999 single, In Together Now. Producer DJ Premier said in an episode of the YouTube series, So What's Up, that he originally declined Fred Durst's invitation to produce this track. But after meeting him in person and finding out Durst owned a number of his mixtapes, he decided to accept. See, again, folks, just another example of why you don't judge a book by its cover. You don't just assume somebody is the way they are because of how you perceive them acting. There's a lot of people that I've seen just in the distance, and I'm like, I don't know what it is about them, but I don't like them. And then I meet them, and then I like them. Hell of a concept, isn't it? To actually give people a chance. All right, folks, and that pretty much concludes my list of the best cross-genre rock collabs of all time. It was such a fun reoccurring segment to do this week by week, talking about all the different cross-genre collaborations of all time. Now, one day I would like to revisit this topic, but not necessarily talk about cross-genre collabs, but maybe talk about collabs within the genre. Because there have been some great country artists that have collabed together, rap artists that have collabed together, pop artists that have collabed together. And we never talked about any of that. We just talked about the cross-genre collabs. So that was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. I definitely did. Anytime I can include music onto the show and talk about music, it's always it's always fun. All right, folks, we still have lots more Off the Cuff of Adam Banks coming at you live after these words. Stick with us. We will be right back. Hi, my name is Courtney Keeler from the Voice of Licensing Youth. You are listening to the radio 
legs, the width of the people, WLXU 93.9 LPFM, Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. Let's go places safely, Lexington. Are you buckled up? Are your passengers? Seat belts are required by law in the state of Kentucky, and for good reason. If you're in a crash, wearing your seatbelt can cut your chances of dying almost in half. Hi, I'm Amy from Toyota, reminding you to wear your seatbelt every time. Hey, I'm Lamont, the host of Point to the Sky Radio. Tune in to WLXU 93.9 every Thursday at 8 p.m. for the unmasking of the truth of mental health. If you want to talk hey, about Hey, Shannon Har, I haven't seen you, buddy, in a long time. The Lexington Tool Library offers a collection of common tools. Borrowing is open to all members, regardless of ability. Kay to Montgomery, pay. hello. The Lexington Tool Library aims to reshape Hello, Kathy, Josh, Dale. And consumption. Some of the Josh, the when we go into the Red Mile, Mile, my friends. Tools, kitchen equipment, camping I am out for the summer. Ready to rock and roll. For more, you can visit LexTools.org. Radio Lex has the support of vinyl sponsor Susie Escobel, realtor with Allied Realty. Thanks, Susie. off the cuff. Adam Banks here with you. We've been talking about graduation today on the show. It's in the forefront of most people's life because everybody's got somebody they know usually graduating from somewhere, whether it's high school, college, grade school. This is a very popular graduation song, Good Riddance. And we've talked about the best graduation songs of all time, and this was definitely on the list. But folks, <laughs> we talked at the beginning of the show about when speeches, graduation speeches, went off the rails. Well, what about when the announcer that's calling the names at graduation gets every pronunciation of the names wrong? I'm talking not just one, not just two, every single one of them. <laughs> this uh, was, there, was a uh, there was a university called Thomas Jefferson University, and it was in Philadelphia. And they have apologized to students, families, and their loved ones for the disaster that took place last Friday during the graduation ceremony for the nursing students. So I read this story and I watched the video of the graduation announcer calling out the names and butchering every single name that she called out. And I started to really get a little worried because that's what I do. I am always being asked by my college to call out the names for graduation. As a matter of fact, I'm doing it tomorrow night for a college. I'm calling out the names for a graduation. And usually I don't worry. I don't really um, put much thought into it. I don't, because I, it's not like I'm messing up the names. But now this story has come to the forefront of this lady who they have not revealed her name and for good reason. She's messed up the graduation names and she butchered the names so bad when she was calling them out that this video went viral, and now everybody has seen it. And now I feel like that graduation announcers have a magnifying glass over them when they're calling out names. So everybody tomorrow night when I'm calling out these names at graduation is going to be staring at me, waiting for me to mispronounce a name. I'm going to go ahead and get in front of it and say, I've never been the best pronunciator, 
I've never really been, I mean, if you go back and watch some of my old television shows that I used to do, you can see that I would butcher people's names and they kept bringing me back, but oh well. But I don't think it could get any worse than what happened in Philadelphia at Thomas Jefferson University. And I'm going to play the video for you and I'm going to let you hear the audio of this PA announcer getting the students' names wrong. You got to think. When you graduate, it is your big moment. And the one thing that you don't want messed up when you walk across that stage that took you four years to accomplish, the last thing you want is for your name to be said wrong. So every name needs to be said correctly. Even though you'll feel like that I take it very serious because I know how important it is for the families and the students that walk across the stage. Well, this lady who they had announced the names, she butchered it. As bad as, as you could butcher a graduation ceremony, she totally did. So let's take a listen at this lady from Thomas Jefferson University, the graduation announcer, call the names of the students that walked across the stage and get the names wrong. We're going to start out with this name she's trying to say, Megan Louise Aubrey. Sounds pretty simple, right? Megan Louise Aubrey. Let's take a listen at the graduation announcer. <laughs> Miju. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This next one is Jessica Lynn Bauer. She's already messed it up. She said Jessiku. <laughs> Okay, this next one is Allison Nicole Bishop. <laughs> this next one is Victoria Elizabeth Bruce. Victoria Elizabeth Bruce. Here we go. Victoria Zuba Broth. Broth. Now the audience is starting to gasp because they're in such shock that she's butchering the names so bad. Okay, the next name she calls is Molly Elizabeth Camp. Molly Elizabeth Camp. And then this next one here is Allison Carol Campbell. Allison Camp oh, that was decent. And then this is the one that gets me the most. Thomas Michael Canaveri. Thomas Michael Canaveri. Now, the reason this one gets to me the most is because his first name is Thomas, and she gets the pronunciation of Thomas wrong. And the name of the university that she works at is called Thomas Jefferson University. And she still gets the name Thomas wrong. Thomas Michael Canterbury. Take a listen. Now, she was released uh, 10 minutes uh, from announcing the names, and they did replace her with somebody else. 10 minutes, way too long. 10 minutes, way too long. And I tell you, it's it's been something else. I'd say this lady, I don't know if she's lost her job. I don't know if it was exposed that she cannot read. But I hope to God that she's not a faculty member because if that's the type of faculty that is teaching at Thomas Jefferson University, maybe you need to do a reevaluation of your faculty. Your faculty should know how to read. Now, I do sympathize with her if her language 
her first language is not English. I mean, that would kind of like be, that would be like me trying to get up and do a name of a bunch of Spanish names. Of course, I would mess up on a lot of those. But what was Thomas Jefferson University thinking letting a lady whose language isn't, whose language, first language isn't English, get up and pronounce a bunch of names? Now, in West Virginia where I teach, a lot of the names are very simple. Names like John and Joe and Jim and Jeff. So it's hard to mess up names like that. But when you get to these universities from different states, and they've got a diverse group of students from all over the world coming in, you're going to have names that are going to be hard. That's a little bit more understanding. But the students here at Thomas Jefferson University, you heard the names. She was butchering names like Thomas, like Allison, like Sarah. I mean, come on. These are basic English names, and you're butchering them. You need to at least have a little practice run of who you ask to announce the names before you do it. The university did respond. It says here that they released a statement. It says here, the leadership and faculty of Thomas Jefferson University extends our sincerest apologies for the mispronunciation of the names of several of our graduating nursing students during our recent commencement ceremony. Also posted in that statement, it says, This ceremony is a celebration of the significant achievements of our students, and each graduate deserves to have their name honored correctly on this pivotal day. The university also extended their apologies to the students' loved ones for any disappointment the pronunciations may have caused. They said, This unfortunate era does not reflect the immense respect we have for our graduates and the value we place on their hard-earned accomplishments. Well, a little too late for that. You could tell that the faculty was embarrassed. Everybody on stage was mortified. I can only imagine what the students felt like. But you know what? You attended a very iconic graduation ceremony now because your graduation ceremony will go down in infamy because of the graduation announcer getting all of those names wrong. <laughs> Thank God that she was not ever revealed on camera. You'd never seen her face. And it's not been put out there of who it was. I am sure if you do some digging, you can find out who it was. I'm sure somebody from Thomas Jefferson University has posted who it was. Nobody is safe because of cell phones now. But this wasn't even from a cell phone video. This was the official Thomas Jefferson University graduation feed. And I just thought it was pretty funny. Hopefully, karma doesn't come back and bite me because tomorrow I'm doing the graduation names. But I don't think it could get any worse than this lady did at Thomas Jefferson University. All right, folks, this seems like a good spot to take Off the Cuff's song of the week break, and I have a banger for you guys, and this, since we have been doing cross-genre collabs and we've been having topics over that, I feel like this is a great one because this is a cross-genre remix uh, of Joe Diffie and Post Malone when they get together and they sing Joe Diffie's country song, Pickup Man. Post Malone has been flirting with country music for a long time, singing country songs throughout his concerts, doing little country bits here and there, showing up on country stages. So it's only a matter of time before we get a posty country album. But listen to this song that Post Malone sings, uh, with Joe Diffie, who, of course, you guys know has passed away. But this is Pickup Man, a Joe Diffie original remixed by Post Malone. Enjoy the song. We'll be back. Well, I got my first truck when I was hey, Linda. Good to see you. Betty, Gina. Kathy, hey from Ohio, hello, hello. Gary, you're going to be in Lexington in a couple weeks. Do you know the dates you're going to be in Lexington? Because that sounds perfect. That sounds perfect.
This is such a great song. I wish I could play it over the Facebook live stream, but Facebook would definitely kick me off if I tried to do that. So if you want to hear the broadcast in its entirety, check it out on the radio, radiolex.us. I'll have the show posted to podcast soon, and you can hear it. I think we need that Post Malone album sooner rather than later. That country album from Post Malone, when is it dropping? He's been flirting with it forever. Been doing collabs with Morgan Wallen and doing remixes with the late Joe Diffie. I mean, the song is eventually, or the country album is eventually going to drop by Posty, and it will be a number one album. I'm going to predict that. But speaking of country music, folks. One of the most iconic venues in the country music industry is the Grand Ole Opry. And if you would have ever told me I had a reason to go to the Opry, I would have dismissed it as delusional. There's no way that I would ever have a reason, a reason to go to the Opry, unless it was to watch a performance of a country artist that I love. But to actually be invited to the Grand Ole Opry, me, me to be invited, to the Grand Ole Opry is something that I thought that would never exist in the world that I live in. A, because I am not in the country music industry. Two, I am not talented in the uh, music industry as far as instruments and, and singing. So that was just never a thought that entered my mind. But yesterday, that all changed. I was notified that... I was nominated for a Josie Music Award at the 10th Annual Josie Music Awards held in Nashville, Tennessee at the Grand Ole Opry. I have been nominated for Best Radio Show Slash Podcast. Off the Cuff with Adam Banks is on that nomination list along with nine other nominees. Over 50,000 submissions of nominations were submitted to this award show. So to be among the 10 in the category of best radio slash podcast is, I'm very humbled by that. I am very truly humbled by the recognition from the Josie Music Awards. And what's special about this recognition from the Josies is that it's not publicly voted on. Yes, that's special too to get votes from the public, to get votes from your fans and your listeners. I love that. You guys know how passionate I am about my listeners and my fan base. But the fact that this award was nominated, they, was, they come up with the nomination by putting together a committee and they listen to all the submissions and they look through all the files and they look through audio files and they wanted to make sure that your show was worthy of the submission because, like I said, there were thousands of submissions. So to know that a committee looked at my work, listened, liked what they heard, liked what they seen, and nominated me is an honor in itself. Now, of course, I would love to win the award, but just getting nominated, it is truly, truly an honor. The award ceremony takes place on October the 27th. That is on a Sunday. And it's a two-day event, the 26th and 27th of October. So still five months away until the Josies are here. So I'm sure leading up to the Josies, I will do some type of a preview of that award show and I'll talk more about it. As a matter of fact, my friend 
and colleague Renee Collins Cobb, who works here at Radio Lex and has her own show on Tuesday nights here, Overtones Live, we plan on doing a collab. I bet you guys are sick of hearing that word collab, from me at least. But her and I are planning on doing a collab where we do Josie Music Award preview shows, and it will be during her, mostly her time slot on Tuesday nights. So you can check those out on Tuesdays on Radio Lex, where we'll be speaking to several nominees and interviewing them. But it's just weird to be going to another award show as a nominee. I went my whole career without getting nominated. And this year, in 2024, this makes the second nomination that I have received, just based off my work in radio. And if you would have ever told me that the show would have gotten to the point it has, I would have said, I know, because I always had faith in the show and the ability of my talents. I always had faith in that. But when it happens, it still is such a humbling experience, and I am very grateful and thankful to all of you guys who has supported me throughout my entire career. Linda on the show thread says, congratulations. Um, Renee, she <laughs> she's amazing. She is on here. She says, I'm a rock star. She's on here congratulating me. One of the, my biggest champions, folks, is that lady right there, uh, Renee Cobb. And I really do appreciate her and all of her support that she has given me. But the Josie Music Awards will be in October, and I am so excited to talk about that more as the months pro uh, progress. Congratulations also to Renee, who I've been bringing up over and over. She was also nominated in the same category. So I don't look at this as competition, Renee. Your show is fabulous and phenomenal, and we do these shows together all of the time. So a win for you is a win for me. And congratulations to Radio Lex, who was also nominated as one of the best radio stations um, in just, I guess, the world. This is a national, national award show held in Nashville. And the fact that all three of us from this station got nominated for that award show is phenomenal. I mean, Radio Lex is up against radio stations from Sirius XM Satellite Radio. This is nothing to scoff at, folks. So we are so excited to bring to you mini Josie Music Award preview shows, and we're excited to talk about it as time progresses. But thank you, as always, to the listeners for listening to the show and making it what it is. You keep fueling me to do better. All right, folks, we've got one more segment to go. Stick with us. We will be right back. Mimi huwa na shughuli nyingi kwa ajili ya familia yangu na kusaidia jamii yangu. Kila ninajua ni kijijali ndio njia bora ya afya njema kwa afya. Oh shoot. I will uh, talk about all the stats, Renee. Um, when I get back on the air, I didn't realize that it was international. I thought it was national. I didn't realize it was international. That's even wilder. Did you know a person hitting a windshield in a 40 mile an hour crash feels the same force as someone falling off a five story building? Hi, this is Justin with Toyota, reminding you that seat belts are the most effective safety feature on your vehicle. They can reduce the risk of fatal injury up to 60%. Let's go Lexington safely. Buckle up. everybody to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Last segment of the hour. Renee on the show thread is reminding me that the Josie Music Awards is not a national award show. It is an international award show. Excuse me. So it goes beyond the continent of North America, folks. And over 50 Kentucky artists have been nominated already. So that's not surprising. I was looking at the category that I am in. And I have noticed radio shows from Philadelphia, that's in my category. I noticed a show that was from Illinois. But I'm telling you, right here in Kentucky, folks, this state is just ate up with talent in the music industry. 
But that is, I'm telling you nothing you don't know. Look at the people that have come from this state, not just in the music industry, in the world of acting, for instance. You got people like George Clooney, Johnny Depp, Jennifer Lawrence. The list goes on and on and on. And people, they would look at Kentucky and think, oh, Kentucky, that's the last state to have a hip-hop artist succeed. Hello, Bryson Tiller, Jack Harlow, stop it. Kentucky, the talent's right here. Folks, today is May the 16th, 2024, which makes today National Notebook Day. And it is celebrated on the third Thursday of May. And this year it falls on May the 16th. And this is a holiday that encourages people to record their thoughts events, and information in a notebook. It is especially important to have a notebook or journal if you are the type of person whose mind goes so many places at once. One of the reasons why keeping track of your ideas is beneficial is that it helps to focus the mind. People will often revisit their journal entries when they need inspiration and ideas. So when I'm trying to come up with topics for the show, I am always writing it down in a notebook, and I go back to the notebook and pull out a topic from my notebook. And I have a whole notebook of topics that I've not done. So whenever I need a topic to talk about on the show, I go back to the notebook. And I know I'm not the only one that does that. Musicians, for instance, they do it. When they have a catchy little tune that hits their ears, they write it down in a notebook because you're going to forget it later. You think... You're not going to forget something, but you will. I mean, it's easy for me to forget five minutes after the fact when I do something. So it is important for me to write things down. And today is the day to do it. It's National Notebook Day. And here is a little timeline of uh, notebooks. In in 1888, that's when the first legal pad was invented. In 1924, the Spiral Notebook makes its debut. I think that's the most iconic notebook, right? Is the Spiral Notebook. That's what students use. That's what I still use today to write my thoughts in. And in, in 2016 was when the nation declared the first National Notebook Day. Here are some ways that you can celebrate National Notebook Day. You can make your own notebook. You can take your notebook everywhere today, whether it be at a restaurant, whether it be uh, at a concert even. Write down your thoughts. Write down your thoughts today. It's National Notebook Day. And then another way to celebrate it is to read your old notebook. Go back. If you have an old notebook that you wrote notes in, go back and read through it. You will be amazed at some of the things that you were thinking during that time. I know that I used to do a little journaling back in the day. That was before podcasting was a thing. So in order for me to express myself creatively, I did it in a notebook. And it was a journal. A lot like Doug Funny did on the show Doug. And I have gone back and I have looked at some of the things that I have wrote. And you talk about a trip taking you back to where your mind was when you were writing those thoughts in that notebook. Here are some five facts about paper that you didn't know. Not all paper is made from wood. Um, uh, Paper money is not paper at all. It says here that the U.S. paper currency is composed of 75% cotton and 25% linen for durability. Uh, It's nearly 2,000 years old. It, It was invented by the Chinese, and the word paper comes from paperous. Uh, 90 million tons of paper is produced every single year. Uh, Why do we love National Notebook Day? It promotes creativity. It makes our children more creative, and it creates appreciation. So happy National Notebook Day to everyone out there. And to celebrate it, get you a notebook, write down your thoughts, and then go back and look at it a year later. You will be amazed at what was going through that mind of yours all those years later, because I tell you, it is a trip to go back and revisit some of those things. All right, folks, this seems like a pretty good spot to stop the show and call it a day here on Off the Cuff of Data Banks. If you liked what you heard today, you'll probably like our previous episodes. All of our episodes are archived on podcasts. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you stream your favorite podcast. 
You can follow the show on social media at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. You can follow me, the show host, on social media at The Adam Banks. We release new episodes every Thursday from 4 to 5 right here on Radio Lex, WLXU 93.9 FM, which means we will be back same time, same place, 4 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Adam Banks, and this is Off the Cuff. You are listening to the King of Radio. I will catch you down the road. Thank you so much, Nikki. I need it. See you guys.